Welcome to Python 3 Advanced 4, Regular Expressions. In this video we'll be looking at what regular expressions are, how to construct simple patterns, and how to use those patterns in our Python programs. Every video will have all slideshows and code available in the description. So what is a regular expression? Regular expressions, or regex for short, is a pattern matching language. Formalized by Stephen Kleene in the 1950s with his description of regular language. These expressions are used to search text to find single words or words that follow a set of rules. Today, most programming languages support regular expressions, and those that don't usually have a library that can be used to implement them. An expression is built with a string of characters. They are built using two types of characters. Meter characters, which have special meaning, and regular characters that have literal meaning. The special meaning characters are things like square brackets, and the regular characters are things like the letter A, B, or C. It can be pretty simple to pick up a basic regular expression, however some more advanced expressions can be very hard to understand and construct. Now I won't go into too much detail on how regular expressions work, because the algorithms are going out of the scope of this series. There is a few different algorithms, three I believe, that are used for regular expression evaluation. However, the most common and fastest is the DFA or Deterministic Finite Automaton algorithm. If you like maths, feel free to look into the mathematics behind this concept. If you're going for efficiency in your program, then it may be handy to know that the DFA algorithm takes 0, 2 to the m time to construct the expression, where m is the length of the pattern, but it takes o n time to search when n is the length of the string being searched. Here we can see a few of the basic meta characters we can use in our regular expressions. The dot or period symbol is used to match any single character. So for the example expression, dot at would match strings like cat, hat, sat, etc. The square brackets represent a single character that is inside the square brackets. So the expression open square brackets ch close square brackets at would match the strings cat and hat, but not sat. The square brackets with a caret, the up arrow thing, will be a, any single character that is not in the brackets. So the expression open square brackets, caret, c, close square brackets, at, would match things like hat and sat, but not the word cat. The caret character will only match if the match is at the start of the string. Similar, the dollar symbol will only match if the match is at the end of the string. The parentheses or circle brackets will allow for a sub-expression to be used in the expression, and the star symbol will match a preceding character zero or more times. For example, the expression c dot star will match any string starting with c, so cat, coat, class, etc. Okay, so we have two base methods to use our regular expressions with in Python. These are match and search. Match will check to see if the expression matches the entire string that it's handed, whereas search will check to see if there is a match anywhere inside the string. It's important to keep this in mind when you're choosing which one to use. Now let's write a small program to test that we can get regular expressions working and using match and search. Let's create our regtest.py file. Okay, so I'll come over to Ubuntu, and I'll create the regtest.py. Right, so we want to import regular expressions, so import re for regular expressions. Then we'll define our main function, def main. Okay, now we need a, a string to search, so we'll call it line. And we'll make line equal to I think I understand regular expressions. Alright, and we'll close off that string, and that's the one that we're going to search. So first we'll use the match method. So I'm going to use match result to hold the result of the cert, uh, the match. And re.match. So we're going to try and match the string think inside line. And we're going to use two flags, which I'll talk about a little bit later. So we're going to use re dot capital M. And then we're going to use the uh, pipe symbol, or the or symbol, which is above the enter key if you hold down shift. And then we're going to do re.i for case insensitive. All right. 
So we've created our match and we're going to do if match result. So if there's any result at all, we're going to print match found and we'll add on the match result dot group. Now the group is just the um, the answer that it found inside the results. Okay. Now we're going to use else. So if there was no match, we're going to print no match was found. Alright, we'll close that off. Now we're going to use the search method now. So we'll do a search result variable. And that's going to equal re dot search this time. And we're going to search for think again. Inside line. And we're going to use re dot m pipe re dot i. All right. So that's going to search our string for the word think. So if search result, so if there's any results at all, we're going to print search found and then we'll add on our search result dot group. Else, if there's nothing found inside the string, we're going to print nothing found in search. All right, now we'll write our if underscore underscore name underscore underscore is equal to underscore underscore main underscore underscore, then we're going to run main. All right, Oop. put in the wrong quote. Okay, and we'll save this, so we'll right quit. And let's give it a shot. So python3 regtest.py. Now, you'll notice we get no match was found, and then we get search found think. And that's because the word think did not match the whole string. So there was no match found. However, our search did come up with the results think, as the think is inside the string. It's the second word. Cool. Okay, so now we have tested and have our regular expressions working, let's make a more useful program to use our new knowledge. We'll create a command line program that will look up a word in a text file and print out the line it was in. It will take two arguments, one the word we are searching for, and the second the text file to search through. So let's create our lookup.py file. Okay, so we'll come back over to Ubuntu. and vim lookup.py and we're going to import our regular expressions again and we'll import argpass so we can pass our arguments nice and easy and we'll define our main and inside main we're going to create our parser so our parser equals argpass dot argument parser and now we're going to add our arguments so parser dot add underscore argument and our first positional argument is going to be the word we want to search for and our help for that is going to equal let's say uh, specify word to search for. And we'll close off those quotes and close off the argument. All right, we'll add another argument. So parser dot add underscore argument. And we're going to use the second positional argument of f name for the file name. And the help for this one will be specify file to search. All right, so that's our arguments done. Let's pass our args into an args variable. Args equals parser dot pass. Let's go args. 
All right, so we've got our arguments in. We're ready to start searching. So our search file variable is going to equal open. And we're going to open up the args.f name, so the file name that we should open. And we'll initialize a variable called line num. And we'll make that zero to start. And that's going to count what line we're up to. Okay, so for line in search file dot read lines. So we're going to read every single line out. We're going to line equals line dot strip. And we're going to strip any backslash n or backslash r characters. All right, and that's inside quotes. So we're going to strip backslash n backslash r. And now we're going to increase the line uh, line num. So line num plus equals one. And now we're going to search. So our search result is equal to re dot search. And we're going to search for args dot word inside the line. And we're going to use re dot m and pipe or or re dot i for case insensitive. All right, so that's going to search. Now, if there's a result, so if search result, then we're going to print out the string of line num plus in quotes a colon space close quotes plus the rest of the line. All right, so that's going to print out the line that we found a set, uh, found a result on. Uh, let's write our if name equals main. So if underscore underscore name underscore underscore is equal to underscore underscore main underscore underscore, then we're going to run main. All right, so let's uh, right quit and save this, and let's give it a shot. So our Python three look up dot pi. And let's search, uh, let's actually search the file we just made. We just made lookup.py. So we'll search for the word main, because I know that main's in there a couple of times. We used it to define the main function, and we check to see if uh, main is currently being run, and then we run the main um, function. So we're going to search for main, and in the file lookup.py. So it's going to search itself if we hit enter and we found on line four we have def main on line 20 we found if name equals main and on line 21 we run the main function so that's the three lines that the word main occurs on cool so hopefully that all worked fine and now we have a program we can search text files with all right you may have noticed that at the end of our match and search methods we had a field with something like re.m line re dot i. These are called flags. We can use flags to alter how the regular expression is run. This is useful to make our expressions smaller and easier to use. You may not always want to use them however, especially if your expression is designed to be really strict. The flags we used earlier was insensitive case search, so even if our word had capitals in it, it would still find it, and the new line separator that allows the caret and dollar to match at the end and start of the line rather than just at the start of the string. All right, search and replace is also a handy feature to use sometimes. Python implements this with the sub method, short for substitute. The sub method takes a pattern, the replacement text, and the string to replace in. There is also the optional parameter to set the max amount of replacements to make. By default, it's all found instances of the matching text. Do you think you could alter the lookup program to support replacing? So why should we use regular expressions? Well, because sometime in your programming career, you'll have to search through text or strings. There is no point reinventing the wheel. Regular expressions run quite efficiently and are about as good as it gets at the moment for searching strings. Most programming languages use the same standard regular language, so understanding what patterns do and how they are constructed will prove useful for reading expressions as well. An extra thing to note about regular expressions is that the time to evaluate a pattern, the backend bit, before it can actually search, takes a longer time the more characters in the pattern. 
So if you're planning on using the same expression more than once, I suggest compiling the pattern first and using that object for matching and searching. For example, my reg equals re.compile and then our pattern. Then the result will equal my reg.match the string. I hope you now feel confident with how to go about using regular expressions in your Python programs. Next we're going to be covering threading. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.